Hello everybody, this is Chris Mackey and this is your fifth uh, tutorial on uh, Honeybee Energy Simulation. And in this one we're going to be assigning glazing to uh, two zones that we've been working on. And if you guys have been following along, you will remember in our, in our last video, we had, uh, we had these, essentially we solved the adjacencies between the zones and sort of fit into our, uh, the data structure and the properties of the zones, which walls were adjacent to what and which, you know, which are interior, con interior constructions versus exterior. And, uh, and we had sort of made this kind of complicated thing where we, uh, where we set uh, the bottom floor of my parents' house that we're simulating here to air walls while the, the top was something different. Um, but in this one, uh, I mean, I'm gonna gonna make a little bit of a of a simplification just so so we can kind of focus more on the windows. I'm just gonna make everything in in uh, my parents' house a uh, a default interior partition or or interior floor. Um, so all right, let's see. I'll start. I'm just gonna set this to false and uh, and let's see. We'll get rid of separating the 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 zones by floor there, and we'll just we'll just take all of the zones together, all of those HP zones, and, uh, and, uh, and let's see, we won't need this anymore, and we'll get rid of that, and, uh, and let's see, and, and we'll set that to true. So now we're just essentially, yeah, we're going we're gonna to start with the assumption that all interior walls are, are actual walls, they're not air walls, or, or, or things that are meant to approximate an open space, they're, they're, they're actual walls. And so once this finishes running in a, uh, in a second, there we go. Uh, and let's see, we will, we'll have to, all right, and, uh, and so I'm just going to turn the preview on for this so that we can see. So this is, this is the status of our zone so far. We've got, the, they're at least, these zones know that they're adjacent to each other. They know which is a roof and a wall. Uh, but all right, let's see. So now to assign windows to these zones, there is a, an easy component that allows you to do this called this honeybee glazing based on ratio. Uh, which I had the pleasure of, of coding most of it. Um, and this will automatically solve, if you drag and drop this onto the canvas, this will automatically create windows for your, your, your honeybee zones uh, based on an input glazing ratio uh, that you have for, for the side. So let's say, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll hook up our honeybee zones. And you notice this one can actually accept honeybee objects, so they don't necessarily have to be closed zones. If, if you wanted to use this for radiant stuff, I'll just mention that on the side. But, but for us case, our honeybee objects are honeybee zones. They're not, they're not individual surfaces. Um, and let's say we want a glazing ratio of, uh, I don't know, let's see, my parents' house don't, doesn't really have too many windows on it. Maybe we'll say like 0, 0 0.25. Um, you know, it's about 25% glazed, I would say, or my parents' place. And we can just hook that up to glazing ratio. And when we set this Boolean toggle to true, uh, that were for run it rather, setting run it to true, you will see that it will, it will, I mean you won't see it at first because the preview is off on this glazing ratio component, but if we were to take the honeybee objects out of here and plug them into this, this honeybee zones, uh, it, you'll see that it's now assigned windows to all the walls that were, sorry, yes, all the walls that were on the exterior, so all these, these yellow things that we're seeing right here uh, in, in, the, in the scene. And because my computer is slow, I think I'm just going to fast forward for a second. Oh, no, no need to fast forward. It just finished. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see. And you'll see, okay, all right, the preview's off. But if we were to take these new closed viewers, actually, you know what we can do first? I'm going to turn the preview off on these, these different surfaces here and turn the preview on here. And you guys will see that, that there are windows now assigned to the exterior, uh, exterior walls and stuff. Um, so, all right, and actually, if you were to plug this into the, the, the preview component that we have been using and give it a few seconds for my slow machine. Okay, I fast forward a bit there for you guys, but I'll turn the preview off on this now and turn it on on this, and you'll see that the walls now have all these, these things that have, you know, spots where windows have been punched in them. And you can see it tries to do a good job. Sometimes if you give it weird geometry like this attic sort of surface here, I mean, you're, yeah, you can't always necessarily get good things out of it because it's, you know, it's, it's doing a lot of work for you. Um, but there are some ways, there are a few options that I'll show you on here that you can use to kind of simplify it. Um, but you can see sort of by default it is, uh, you know, it's also it's breaking up the windows at a certain distance along there that, that we can change because, I mean, this, by default this is, this is very good for, for, um, for daylight simulation to have a bunch of different windows spread out over the surface, but it's not always what we want for energy simulation because it can take a while. Um, so I'll show you that there's this option for breakup window. Uh, which will essentially, instead of for, you know giving you a bunch of windows for each surface, um, depending on your your model units, uh, you can instead, if I set the boolean 
for this to be true, to break up window to true, um, you'll see that it will generate a, a house where, where it'll try and only make one, one uh, uh, window for each surface, essentially. It will try and do that for you. Um, and you can see, I, I, I this, I don't, I'm not so sure if it will solve necessarily our, our kind of crazy window up there. But I'll show you guys a workflow later where you can assign windows if you already have the geometry in, in Rhino for your windows. Um, there's another pathway to bringing that geometry in and making honeybee zones. But this is this is for your early design when you you know you just have a rough building mass or rough set of zones and you just need to just assign glazing so you can run an energy model and have it roughly be close to to you know to what what's actually going on in your real building. Um, all right. Uh, well, when it looks like actually maybe maybe break up window to true to oh actually ah uh, i'm stupid you have to set this one to false all right now i'm going to double click that back to false and then it won't break up the window duh chris okay uh well yeah so i mean but you guys probably could have already caught my mistake before i was doing that i'm just going to fast forward so you don't have to wait for my slow machine again Okay, and now you guys see um, that it, it's not it's not breaking up the window into individual surfaces on there. Um, that it's it's whoops. Okay, that it's yeah. You're getting much more, more much just one window per surface where you can uh, where where it can do that. And you can also see like right now it's just it's just punching these geometries. But you'll notice that from this component uh, that we've been using to break up all these things that you do actually get window surfaces out of these. So actually this is pretty useful. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a Control C Control V for another one of these preview things and you can plug in the windows here and maybe I'll, I'll set it like a nice transparent cyan maybe for for our windows uh, let's see maybe, maybe a little more blue and uh, yeah, boost up the alpha value to make them transparent and so you can see yeah so now we've now we've got windows in our model and you know and they're they're relatively like uh, they're, they're not broken up, so they, well, except in, the, except in the case of our kind of crazy one here. But, you know, this will sort of help our energy simulation run faster if you don't have a lot of broken up windows. Um, and let's see, and, and you, you know, I mean, you can also see that it's, it's the, we didn't actually do this from the solve adjacencies, but you can see that when we pass it through solve adjacencies that they're interior walls. So, so you guys, you know, I'm just hooking that up to the same one as the other wall. So, all right, so now we're starting to have something that is looking like a, 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 a model that we can run through an energy simulation. Uh, but before we, before we run to that, I just want to show you guys a few other options that you have with this. So, and you know, maybe this is easier to show. I, I think actually, guys, yeah, because because my system takes so slow to do all these zones, I'm going to use our item selector here, and we'll just take one of the one of these these zones with adjacencies. Uh, let's see, what's what's a what's a one that we're kind of interested in playing around with window types? Maybe, uh, all right, we'll say uh, kind of. Let's maybe take a bigger one. Um, all right, all right. Let's see. Let's see this back porch area, this den, maybe, uh, and we'll, we'll like we'll just look at glazing on that so that we're not uh, changing around. But you can see, all right, uh, and I'll turn the preview off on that. Um, oh, and you can see that it's not; it doesn't have the ceiling because it's just a single zone. But that's okay because we're just looking at glazing right now. But you know, you can set the breakup window to true again, and then it will, it, you know, it will generate things like multiple windows on this den. And you guys can play around things with like like window height. So let's say I want to actually make the windows taller to get daylight deeper in the space for like a certain you know daylight simulation that you're doing. You can plug in a three and that'll make the windows taller. Or you can make them squatter, maybe like 1.5. Um, you know, so you guys can kind of create a bunch of different window types just with this. You know, so that you can get a very specific. Uh, type of window at the at, you know at the end, and if you want to break up the windows more, you know make like a bunch of little windows. Um, you know you can you can oops whoops I did not mean to plug that into skylight ratio, but you guys see that you can you can you know create skylights with this tool as well. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change the uh, the breakup distance so if you want like a lot of little windows um, instead of these like you can do that or you know or you can change drop the sill height down to to a half a meter or something um, so yeah so you guys can really create kind of custom windows for this for a lot of different situations if you're really interested in testing out I mean these are really important for daylight things. 
Um, but maybe I'll also show you guys is that if you ever wanted to assign different glazing ratios for different cardinal directions, um, that's a relatively easy thing to do um, because all you really have to do is plug in, I, I sorry, I just deleted uh, those things. So, uh, so we're just back to these windows. So let's say I wanted more glazing on the south here because, you know, that generally can be kind of helpful sometimes for passive solar heating than on the west. And, you know, we usually don't want so much glazing on the west. So instead, you can put in a list of values here to the glazing ratio, and it will automatically assign it based on cardinal direction. And I have something here that kind of makes it a little bit easier for you, this glazing parameters list. I mean, it's a kind of kind of large component, but it's actually relatively simple. But, you know, you can, you, all this basically does is let's say we want to, we want to maybe keep a small glazing ratio, of maybe, maybe something really small, like 1.5 on our western side here of this, this, this thing. Um, but we want something much larger for our southern, southern side. Uh, so maybe we'll like boost this up to point, like, I don't know, like 0.6, like 60%. And you see that you can plug in this glazing ratio list, and it will assign different different uh, glazing ratios based on those directions. Um, and so, yeah, so you can use this, and you can do this over a whole building, not just the one zone that I've done here, and have it all assigned for all the south, you know, south windows and stuff. And you also like if you have an octagon-shaped building, you'll notice all that this glazing ratio list is is that it's just a list of four values for each cardinal direction. But, you know, if you have an octagon-shaped building or something, you can plug in a list of eight values and make it one for each of those eight different sides. So you guys get a sense of the power of this component. You automatically assign, uh, assign glazing ratios. All right, well, I'm going to bring this back to, well, you know, all right, maybe we'll keep, keep this, uh, well, we kind of have nothing on our, our north and, uh, and east. So maybe, well, maybe we'll make those also kind of smaller. Um, and you'll see that we can, we can, we'll do this for our whole building here. Um, uh, just by changing that and then hooking up the honeybee objects. Um, and then, all right, and then we're, we're now, now we're like, we've got the basis of something that looks like a building. Now we can, can we're kind of at least ready to, to run something through a simulation. And, and I can show you guys at least, you know, get, get at least some fruits of our labor. Because I know we've been building these zones for the last few videos, and you guys are probably excited to see the simulation. So that's the next video, guys. And all right, there's our, there's our house with all of our windows. And, uh, and I'll get ready to see you there, guys. Thanks for, for listening to this one.